Hello everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. In this video we'll talk about the OSPF areas. And before we start I want to point out that my drawing here is somewhat misleading or even wrong. I've made some creative decisions to represent the OSPF areas but I'll get to that in more detail once we've covered the theory. And you'll also find out why I have EIGRP there. So let's get to it. If you've watched my previous videos or studied OSPF before, it should be evident that OSPF is a rather complex protocol and it can put a great demand on the memory and processors of the router. And as the network grows, these demands can become significant or even crippling. And contrary to popular belief, the SPF algorithm itself is not particularly processor intensive. It's actually the related processes such as flooding and database maintenance that burden the CPU. Now, OSPF uses areas to reduce these adverse effects. And in context of OSPF, an area is a logical grouping of OSPF routers and links that effectively divide an OSPF domain into subdomains. That's what I've rep represented on the screen here. So I have three OSPF areas and then that EIGRB domain, which we'll discuss later. So routers within an area will have detailed information of the network inside the area but no detailed knowledge of the topology outside of the area. So this is why inter-area routing is often referred to as distance vector routing. Now we haven't had the distance vector versus link state routing conversation yet, but briefly, with link state protocols like OSPF, the routers have the same full topological information of the entire network in the area, but distance vector protocols like EIGRP rely on the information their neighbor advertises to them. This is why distance vector is often referred to as routing by rumor. And a fun analogy I've heard is that link state routing is like navigating using a map and distance vector routing is like navigating by looking at road signs. So with a map, you know exactly where you're going. You have a complete view of the path, but with road signs, you only know the distance and direction, right? And this is obviously a simplified description of the differences, but you get the point. Um, I'll probably make a video about this in the future, but hold on to your hats until then. Anyways, back to OSPF areas. So the routers inside an area have an identical detailed view of the topology, but limited information about networks outside the area. And because of this, a router must share an identical link state database only with the other routers in its area, not with the entire OSPF domain. And therefore, the router holds less information in its database and the smaller database reduces the impact on a router's memory. And the smaller link state databases also mean fewer LSAs to process and therefore less impact on the CPU. Now, because the link state database must be maintained only within an area, most flooding is also limited to an area. So to summarize what I've just covered is that inside each of these areas, the routers know the full topology, right? So these all these routers will exchange LSAs with each other in their own areas. But when they communicate between the areas, 
let's say that there is a network 192.168.3.0 attached to R3. So when, let's say, R5 here wants to reach that network, all it knows that it must go to area zero. And it does not, it is not aware of the full topology from itself to R3. So it does not know which path the packet is going to take beyond its own area. All right, let me delete that. So areas are identified by a 32-bit area ID. And the area ID may be expressed either as a decimal number or in dotted decimal. And the two formats may be used together on Cisco routers. The choice depends on which format is more convenient for identifying the particular area ID, but usually the decimal format is preferred. That's what I've used here in my drawing as well. So for example, area zero and area 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 are equivalent as are area 16 and area 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.16. Now let's take an interesting example here and look at why area 271 would be equal to 0 0.0.1.15. So let me write that here. Mm. So area 271 is equal to 0 0.0.1.15. And why is this? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have to look at the numbers in binary first. So 271 in decimal is 1000011111 in binary. So let me write that here as well. One zero 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 one 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 one. I hope that I typed that correctly. Yeah. So when we crunch some leading zeros in there to turn it into a 32 bit format and add dots after each octet, it becomes zero 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 dot. I don't need to say all the zeros. Four, five, six, seven, and then zero, 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 one, 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 one. Now, if you convert that into dot into decimal again you get 0 0.0.1.15. And that's why 271, area 271 is equal to area 0 0.0.1.15. Okay, let me delete that as well. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so area 0 actually has a special meaning and it is reserved for the backbone. Now the backbone is responsible for summarizing the topologies of each area to every other area. And for this reason, inter-area traffic must pass through the backbone. Non-backbone areas cannot exchange packets directly. And as I mentioned before, the exchange of routing information between areas is essentially a distance vector. An OSPF requires all areas to attach directly to the backbone, so it limits the topology to a simple 
hub and spoke topology. And notice here that directly connected means that it can be either physically or virtually directly connected to the backbone. So there's a technology called virtual link to connect an OSPF area to the backbone if it's separated by another area. But that again is a topic for another video and we'll discuss that later. Anyway, so this eliminates redundant paths and prevents it from being subjected to the count to infinity problems, which is typical to distance vector routing. And count to infinity is basically another name for a routing loop. And very briefly, the core of the count to infinity problem is that if A tells B that it has a path to D, there's no way for B to know if the path has B as a part of it. Um, I can leave a link in the description so you can learn more about the count to infinity problem. But now let's move on. So what is the maximum number of routers in an area? There's really not one answer, but a favorite rule of thumb is how many routers the area can handle. So this number might range from 30 to 200. However, the number of routers has little bearing on the maximum size of an area. So far more important factors include the number of links in an area, the stability of the topology, the memory and horsepower of the routers, the use of summarization, and the number of summary LSAs entering the area. And because of these factors, 25 routers might be too many for some area, and other areas might accommodate well over 500 routers. And now let's talk about OSPF router types. So they can be categorized in relation to areas, and there are four different types. Number one, internal routers are routers whose interfaces all belong to the same area. These routers have a single link state database. So for example, R5 here, R6, R8, R9, and R1 would all be internal routers. And two, area border routers or ABRs connect one or more areas to the backbone and act as a gateway for inter-area traffic. An ABR always has at least one interface that belongs to the backbone and must maintain a separate link state database for each of its connected areas. So for this reason, ABRs often have more memory and perhaps more powerful processors than internal routers. So here in the drawing, uh, R2 here and R3 would be area border routers. So then number three, backbone routers are routers with at least one interface attached to the backbone. Although this requirement means that ABRs are also backbone routers, but not all backbone routers are ABRs. And he, that's really the difference between R1 here and R2 and R3. Because R2 and R3 are backbone routers, but they're also ABRs. R1 is not an ABR. And then finally, for autonomous system boundary routers, or ASBRs, are gateways for external traffic, injecting routes into the OSPF domain that were learned from some other protocol, such as EIGRP or PGP. And now you know why I have EIGRP here. So, well, this is actually kind of hard to tell from my area borders here, but 
R9, actually this is what I described uh, wrong before, R9 is actually not an internal router, it is an ASBR. So let me delete that. But I could have very well changed it and moved the area boundary over here, which would have made R9 an internal router and R10 the ASBR. But we'll discuss that a bit more soon. Okay, let me get rid of this as well and make it more clear again. So now let's look at the, my drawing more carefully. So repeating what I said at the start of the video, the area boundaries I've drawn are misleading. The OSPF area is specific to the interface. A router can have interfaces in multiple areas, but I've drawn it this way to make it look like a little to make it look a little bit nicer, but really it should be like this. So hence my creative liberties in this drawing. So it is impossible to have the area boundaries as I've drawn them. Let's me go back to that. So for example, if R2's interface was in area zero and R4's interface was in area one on the common link, they would not become neighbors. So, oops. So this interface and this interface, if they were in different areas, the neighborship would not form. So the area ID is one of the fields in the hello packet that must match between the neighbors. So I had EIGRP here essentially to demonstrate the role of the ASBR. So as I mentioned, I probably would draw the line here. Oops. So that this interface would also be in EIGRP. And essentially the line would happen here. But as I mentioned quickly, I could very, very well take area two all the way to here and make that interface into area two, expanding the area all the way over R10. But yeah, that's really all there is to OSPF areas. Well, actually not all there is to OSPF areas because there are different OSPF area types, but we'll discuss that in another video. And thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.